next portion of the exercise will cover the groundscape, i.e. the stuff beneath our feet. So we'll start off by creating a new layer. It takes a few seconds for that command to, to initialize. Let's try it again. That's better. Create a new layer and we'll call it groundscape. And I'm going to choose color pale gray for this, which is color 9. So it uses a thin pen when it draws it. Okay, and I'll close that. Oh, I'll make it current. Watch out for the line type. It's picked up on the hidden X2 line type there. So I'll change that back to continuous. And OK. Close the dialog box. Groundscape's our current layer. Put the O snaps on. Let's just check them. Perpendicular endpoint. OK. Intersection might be useful as well here. And OK. Right. What I'll do is add some lines. Corner to perpendicular. Return twice. And corner to perpendicular or intersection or endpoint return twice. The next line going from here to here return once but we don't leave the line there we need to move it out by 900 so it's M return <coughs> excuse me pick the line and return make sure ortho's on the base point can be anywhere drag to the left and then type in 900 and return. Now these lines are delineating just where floor finishes start and finish. And they're repeated in the other four corners of the building. So we can mirror them. MI return. Pick the three lines we've just drawn and return. First point is on the midpoint here. Drag upwards cursor in the black space, select and return. So the ortho is making sure it goes horizontally. Return to bring back the same command. Pick the six objects this time and return. And the base point is at the middle of either of these two lines. You can't pick any others. Everything else is broken up. So one of these two drag to the left or right, make sure you don't click on it, pick on anything else select and return. We've got a pool here and some four tree pits to put in as well so let's work on those next. We'll do that, this, start off with a, a line from midpoint, drag it out to about here and return. Then we'll do a series of offsets O return 300 return. Pick this line, go left, pick again. Return twice. Change to 1500 offset. Pick the newest line, go left, pick again. Return twice. Change offset to 900. Return. Pick newest line, go left, pick again final one of these verticals is a 600 offset. This is the actually the width of the tree pit. The 1500 was the width of the pool. Okay, we'll do some horizontal offsets now. First one, half the pool width either way. 1 2 Return twice and then two 600 offsets. One, two. And you could do this one as well. One, two. So we'll do top and bottom at the same time. Press escape to stop the offset command. Then REC, short for rectangle. And we've got the intersection object snap available. And we're going to draw two rectang three rectangles. One there. Return. One there return and one there and return 
looks a bit complicated, but when we strip away these lines, the press escape to get rid of rectangle, if I take away these lines, we should be left with our features. Let's zoom out and mirror these two across to the other side. So MI return pick pick return first point in the mirror line either the very bottom line of the drawing or the very top one select return that's our groundscape features now later on we're going to come back and uh, add the hatching for the for the actual tiling now actually we'll, we'll maybe just do that just now now probably the, the the most predictable way to make this work with with the least bit of effort is to actually polyline the uh, the areas that are needed so let's create a new layer and we'll call this hatch polys okay let's make them a nice bright color so we can see them on top of everything else we draw so I think we'll go for green okay and make it current and we're going to create polyline loops that will hold the hatching. So we'll close that once you've created it. Okay, now they don't have to, you don't have to try and do this all in one big loop, you can do it in, in chunks. So let's let's do this area first and show you how it's done. So PL basically just tracing round the walls. Okay, I'm not too worried if the hatching goes over doorposts. As long as it doesn't go over the walls, that will be my main concern. So I'm just letting the object snap, pick up endpoints. I'm going to do zone at a time. Okay, and I'm one step away from finishing the shape. So I type in the letter C and return. Now what I'll do is I'll polyline the rest and then come back. Okay, so that's my first polyline. If you saw how that was done, I used the C command to close it at the end. So pause the video and I'll polyline the rest and resume and show you what I've done. Okay, so I'll pick up the uh, the drawing now. All the areas for that we're going to receive the hatching have been filled. So if I just move my cursor over them, you can see the shapes. Some are done with rectangles where appropriate, others are polylines. But I've avoided the walls, but I have let the polylines go over doors. Um, just take a bit too long to cut out all those. Right, we'll create a new layer. And we'll call it Hatch. And this is going to be a very light colour. Light pen anyway. So I'll, I'll choose I'll choose the cyan color here and OK. I'll tell you what, I'll choose the uh, the darker gray. I'll change it to dark gray and OK and make it current. Right, the, the hatch command can be launched using the word hatch. Now, what I will do, this is this is a bit, a quite a different dialog box in 2010 to, to the one in 2011, but basically it functions the same way. Uh, we want to choose a type of hatching, and I'm going to go for a user-defined one so I can determine where the grid goes. Actually, I just cancel that. Uh, what I should do first, because I want my hatch pattern to fit accurately onto my drawing, what I can do is set the UCS origin to be this corner and that way the hatch pattern will start here and because this has all been basically drawn carefully using the 300 millimeter grid it should work out absolutely correctly so the command is UCS and return and we want to specify a new origin so type in the letter O and return and then pick using your O snaps 
where you want that origin to be to the end point here right nothing seems to have changed but that's where zero zero is now and then we can launch the hatch command so hatch and return I want a user defined pattern and this is basically individual lines so the angle will be zero so it goes east west but I want double hatching so I get a north south line as well the spacing will be 300 millimeters that's the size of the tiles and then I create click add select objects because I've got objects that I can fill with the hatching so there's quite a few to pick tree grids need picked as well as does the pool okay so I'm just being methodical trying not to leave any out so it's quite a lot of objects there once you select your objects press return and then you can preview the hatch to see if it's looking okay that's fine see it's not going through the windows or is it? It shouldn't be, but uh, I have not drawn it correctly. Okay, <laughs> but uh, I should have drawn around the windows. Or I did on the top, I haven't on the bottom. That was my error, but anyway, a slight incorrection there. Well, I can correct that. Let's correct it before a hatch. So I'll cancel that. And what I need to do is change the boundary for this hatch pattern. Just click on the click on the polyline, its grips appear, and I can just adjust them so that the, light, the hatching won't go through the window. Right, I'll try that again then. So hatch, select objects. Perhaps it lets me do the previous objects. No, <laughs> worth a try. So, pick my boundaries. Three more to get. And return. I want a user defined pattern. Double, doubled up. 300 millimeters. Then preview. It's looking better now. I'm happy with that, so I press enter. Okay, notice the hatch pattern's all in one pattern. If I'd have done that in chunks, it would be probably more editable. Okay, now I need to turn off the hatch polys layer, so I can freeze that. I'll keep them in the drawing. They could be useful again at some point. If I freeze them off and have a closer look at the drawing. Now, just to make sure the hatch pattern does go behind the walls, it looks like it is, but just to make sure, you can use the draw order command, which shortens to D O, D R. Pick the hatch pattern and return, and we want to send it to the back. So you type in B and return. Okay, so that's covered groundscape and hatching of the groundscape. We'll come back later on to show you how you could add some colour into the walls.